It eventually began after an international break with a Worthington Cup first round visit to Boston United. Robert Earnshaw having his first start of the season. And didn't he make the most of it? A brilliant run from Leo Fortune West and a clean cut finish from Ernie. Once again, Leo showing some hidden skills. City and Ernie second, coming from the kind of opportunity that he loves. Splitting the defence, one-on-one -on -one with the keeper, 2-0. Once again, his pace proving too much for the opposition. And soon it was a hat-trick. Leo Fortune West again involved. Ernie's volley unstoppable. If he'd had a point to prove to his manager, he certainly did so that night. As for the fourth goal, Chris Barker in his first season with the club after coming from Barnsley will tell you that this was his goal, despite a defender's deflection. Barker's goal or own goal? Let's give it to Chris. There had to be some consolation for Boston. It came in the second half with this effort from Paul Allender. 4-1, but there was no way back for Boston. And when Willie Boland broke clear, it looked like a fourth for Ernie. But Peter Thorne got a foot in, and it was 5-1. A satisfying night for Cardiff City and for Robert Earnshaw. That hat-trick put Ernie into the starting lineup against Stockport County at Ninian Park three days later, and he quickly justified his inclusion. Shirt off and the familiar somersault. A good cross in, and a good header from Ernie. But Stockport were back in it when a slip by Spencer Pryor let in Luke Beckett. And he certainly made the most of it. City came back though, and when Legg and Earnshaw combined, there was Graham Kavanagh to slide in the winner. Kavanagh proving a major influence as City's challenge began to gather pace. Could City put a string of wins together? Brentford were next on the hit list at Ninian Park, and Ernie was on fire. So too was Andy Legg. A goal with his head from Leggy? What was he thinking of? No wonder they were digging for goals. What a great cross that was. And what a fine header from Andy Legg. But one goal didn't look to be enough, and it was Ernie who settled it. Reese Weston's pass, and a cool finish. The goal celebrations were now coming thick and fast. Once again, Ernie's pace proving too much for the opposition. A 2-1 victory, and it was off to Notts County. A win would keep City close to the leaders. Could they do it at Meadow Lane? The answer came from Gary Croft. A superb strike from City's former Ipswich fullback, and enough to win the game. No goalkeeper could hope to stop this one. A cold Tuesday night at Home Park Plymouth three days later, and a point would be enough to take yellow-shirted City to the top of the table. They were on their way with the opening goal from Ernie. This was his seventh of the season. A lob which gave the goalkeeper no chance at all. 
but when Paul Watton equalised with a somewhat soft free kick, the Bluebirds were rocked. But then Andy Legg's great cross was met by Ernie for his second goal of the match. They were all digging for gold regularly now. Ernie's total was eight goals in 11 League and Cup matches. But how long did the referee want to add at the end? On and on went the game until the inevitable happened. Graham Coughlin forcing in a 98th minute equaliser. But City were now top. Could they stay there? One of their best performances came four days later when an impressive crew Alexandra came to Ninian Park taking a second half lead through Rob Hulse. But what a comeback by Lenny Lawrence's men. Classic equaliser from Ernie, Peter Thorne setting it up with a great touch. Shortly afterwards, Reese Weston creating Ernie's winner. And another 13,000 plus crowd went home happy. It had been a great month with some memorable goals. Into October and City leading the division by a point from Queen's Park Rangers.